Hi there. Thought I'd do a very quick review of this charger that I use. I've been using it for at least three years and it's never given me a problem, never let me down and I use it all the time. It's a really versatile charger, it's from Sky RC, we'll have a closer look at it in a minute, but I use it for my dry cell lead acid batteries that I use my starter and glow plug starter at the field. So I charge that, that's 12 volts. I also use it for my onboard nickel metal high drive batteries and um, also my LiPo. It will do uh, Liffies, I think that's how you pronounce it, and it will do NICADs as well. It's a really, really versatile charger. I'll zoom in on it now and we'll have a look at it. Right, well this is the charger. I think the light's shining on that little bit funny, so I'll just prop it up with this LiPo. That will help. It's, as I said, it's made by Sky RC and it's the MIAX B6 AC version 2. Now, what I would say before I start is there are lots and lots of clones and copies of this charger. And they use this colour, different lettering, even some that look very, very similar. So if you're going to buy this charger, be really careful you get an original because I've seen lots of stories where these have blown up or not these but the copies have blown up and the company is so concerned about the issue they've actually put on a hologram on the back of there so you can check whether this is original or not. Now the charger itself let's go through the many functions and ports it's powered 240 volts uh, got this cloverleaf connector and that goes into the side. I think that's the correct name for it, Cloverleaf. But it will also operate on 12 volts and you can plug that in and you can clip that onto a 12 volt battery. And an airfield I used to fly at, they used to have solar power and rechargeable 12 volt batteries and I used to use this every week at the airfield. Now, one of the other things it's got on it, oh, and, and that worked absolutely fine, the 12 volt, until the voltage of the battery started to drop down quite low, if it was a heavy use day, and then it didn't have enough voltage. But if the batteries are good, it's fine. Certainly off a car, you could run a lead from a, a car cigarette lighter. I don't recommend you leave it in the car. I would run it out onto the grass next to it in the shade, but anyway. PC link, can't remember what that's for, I've never used it, so my apologies. This is a port for a sensor, so if you wanted to, you could monitor the temperature and have a cutoff for your LiPo batteries. You basically plug a, a sensor in there that wraps around your LiPo and it monitors the temperature. Again, that's something I've never used. If we turn over onto the... Uh, onto the other side here and the light shines on this a little bit awkward it's got the balancing sockets so I think that goes from two, three, four, five and six six cell batteries so when you charge it if it's a, a LiPo anyway obviously if it's a lead acid or a nickel metal hydride you don't use the balancing obviously that's just for the lipos and maybe for the liffy i've never had one of those so I, I i don't know but when you plug in your lipo battery you can monitor each individual cell so in this case it's three cells now we'll have a look at the functionality of that in a in a second now as far as the plethora of cables you get you get one primary cable, which is this, which plugs in to the side of the charger. Now, my one beef with this, the one thing I do not like, is that we've got positive, negative, positive, negative, and it's very easy to get this the wrong way around. There is nothing to stop you plugging the negative into the positive. The one thing I would say, though, if you do that and you try to charge it, 
it tells you it's wrong. It doesn't charge it and blow up. So I don't like that, uh, but it does have a fail safe. And the reason I know that it won't let you charge it the wrong voltage, obviously I have done it, well, I was gonna say once, it's probably twice or three times. But it's, like I say, it's got a fail safe. It works very reliably to tell you that it's wrong. Wouldn't have taken much perhaps to have a different style connector on that, but it is what it is, and I still love the charger despite that. So we have the main lead with a T-plug, and then from that T-plug, we can, we've got a number of leads with a, so we've got a male T-plug, we have female T-plugs, we have uh, female T's, sockets, and that will go into a, what's this, this is a, an XT30, I believe. Oh, this is a, no, sorry, this is an XT60. I don't use these, so I'm, I'm not particularly familiar with them, uh, or I don't use them very often. I've only got one on my, uh, on my glow starter, just on the, on the battery there. So we've got that lead. We've got a, another lead here. If we wanted to connect that, onto the lead acid actually using the terminals. Um, as you can see here, I've, I've just put on, uh, on leads. So I, I never use that one either. We have another lead here, which goes onto the, uh, this is a JST connector for the small lipos, which we'll use in a minute. And we have another one here, which goes onto, it's a servo type plug, which goes onto some of the larger LiPos that I've had anyway. Now, I have actually replaced that because the, the original uh, male plug on there wasn't particularly good and it, it gave me some issues, so I, I replaced it. But the females on all of these have been, the female sockets have been, been great. So that's basically what it looks like. As I said, it does, the range of batteries, it does lithium iron as well. So let's just have a look at how this functions with a LiPo battery. Now, let me find something else just to um, stand that on, just to, so the light is a little bit better. Maybe very shiny, so I'm hoping you can, you can see that. So let's plug this in and okay let's start up. Now it comes up, it, the, the menu is quite complicated and I'm not going to go through everything uh, but it's very versatile. Now it tells you the uh, let's have a look you've got a whole range of system settings and where you can have time cutoffs temperature cutoffs you've got uh, the resistance of the battery so if we plug in this lipo so I get it the right way around and it's three cell so if we go to the battery resistance it will check the battery resistance of each individual cell and the next function along oops, if I go that way is the battery meter so it'll tell me tell me the charge of each individual cell now this for lipos it will charge discharge and it will also cycle and it will also do that for these uh, nickel metal hydrides it will discharge and cycle don't think it does it for the lead acid battery but just these two and the NICAD I have no idea or the Liffy because I've never used it now oh, stop I keep pressing the wrong button because this is just upside down for me looking at it. Now it's got the different battery types, so that's lead, we've got nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride, uh, lith 
uh, lipo, the lithium, uh, lithium polymer, is that? I'm li oh, sorry, lipo, I'm reading this upside down. And it also has a memory function, which is what I use. And I've got three things programmed into this. So, my first program is for my three cell LiPo batteries. You can see it's, it's got the voltage and the uh, number of cells. In, I used to have uh, some four cells, I haven't at the moment, and if you try to charge it on the three cell function, it will tell you. Now, if we go, which way? Yep, there is number, function number two, or memory number two that I've programmed in, and it's a nickel metal hydride. And I've got my lead acid battery, and there's my four cell uh, lipos. I'm not gonna go into everything on this because it'll take me forever. And um, so let me just go back into that. Right, now I've got my um, three cell lipo, it's connected up and we'll charge it. So if we hold that down, There we go, and now, now it's charging, and we can see how long it's charging and the current that it's putting in. We can toggle through, and it will show us a number of settings. Um, temperature, let's go that way. There we go, it's telling us the charge of the individual cells and it will tell us how full they are and what the cell voltage is or the overall voltage so it's quite versatile it's very complicated on the uh, menus or oh, it's not complicated it's it's just got a lot of functionality I wouldn't say it was difficult to work out it takes you a little bit when you first get it to get your head around it but in a nutshell, that's what it does. Well, I hope you found that kind of brief overview useful. I could have spent an hour going through the whole functionality, but I just really wanted to get across what a versatile uh, charger it is and how it's got these fail safes that kind of protect you when you're charging it. One correction, I said this was 240 volts, this is the power supply I've got here and I, I'm used to using that. So that, that was an error on my part. It's actually, the, with the cloverleaf connection, it'll do 100 to 240 volts. So it's quite versatile if you're in the US, for example, this will work fine on, on the voltage over there. And as I said, it's got the, the uh, 12 volt functionality as well, which actually is 11 to 18 volts. So just a correction on those, those voltages. But it is really a nice charger. I mean, I'm not connected in any way to SkyRC or, or, or sponsored by them. I haven't sent me this, I've paid good money for it. And I really believe it's a good charger. So if you need a charger, take a look at this. As I said, make sure you get an original because there are lots of copies out there and I have read some fairly horrible stories of them going wrong. So. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful.